Okay, hi everyone. Um, thanks very much for coming and uh, welcome to the second in the Landscape Institute Scotland Reflection Series. The Reflection Series is basically about greater debate and knowledge transfer within our own and also affiliated professions. So the first talk we had was about uh, emerging years, practitioners reflecting on their emerging years at our AGM in, uh, back in May. And tonight we've got Neil and Chris talking about um, a more recent success with the Maggie Centre in Lanarkshire. Without further ado, I'm very pleased to introduce Neil Gillespie from Rearford Hall Architects and Chris Rankin from Rankin Fraser Landscape Architects. First slide. The minds of men are mirrors to one another. And there's a kind of interesting um, story, I suppose, behind this slide for me. It's amazing how one slide can you can tell lots of different stories with the same slide. And in many ways, this might be about um, collaboration. And it's certainly about empathy. And this, this, this notion that we can share ideas across, across disciplines, if you like. But it also has a very deep resonance for us on when it comes to a Maggie Centre. Because I think with a Maggie Centre, we can all put ourselves in someone else's position. So this notion is what I think what David Hume and no scholar uh, is getting at here that the minds of men are mirrors to one another. Another thing that I really wanted to stress was that nothing comes from out of the ether. It's always an accumulation of ideas over many projects. And I'd like to illustrate that a little bit so that time does not pass in architecture or lands certainly in landscape architecture it accumulates. Um, another image, this is a shot about January. In terms of context, you could say this is the high street, it's got a certain scale, it's got a certain material quality, blah, blah, blah. But in actual fact, just at the same moment of the same day, by turning through 180 degrees, your impression of the world has changed completely. Looking east, the sun's rising on a wet street, and all the buildings are thrown into silhouette and you see out of the view, you see North Berwick, in fact. Turn through 180 degrees, the view closes up and the view, the buildings are bathed in sunlight. So context isn't enough. It's got something to do with impression, something to do with atmosphere, something much deeper than just logging that is stone. It's got pitched roofs and it's four or five storeys high. So there's a lot more to it. It's about, it's about atmosphere, I think. And th this was a little project that we did a long time ago, which is now no longer, and it's now a cafe, where we, it's a listed building, it's on Coburn Street, little gallery for a collective, and we put a sheet of glass in front of the historic facade to act as a mirror, so that the city became part of the building. But then in the evening, when the lights came on, suddenly the interior of the gallery became part of the street, so there was a kind of reversal that became part of our idea for the plan. The gallery spaces, big window. Is the street part of the gallery or is the gallery part of the street? The image on the right. This image here. But the route to these moments of clarity, uh, we shifted the apertures as you go through the wall. So they don't line up. So there's this sense of expectation and draw through this. So we like the idea of doubt. <coughs> we like the idea of moments of clarity. This is a, a, a favourite building of mine, Crichton Castle. On the outside is this crumbly image of a castle. And secreted inside it is a Renaissance nail head stone facade of incredible ambition, incredible um, imagination. We're hugely influenced by people. This is Roger Ackling. And he drew with the sun in his hand is a piece of wood and he drew with a magnifying glass and he drew on found pieces of wood. So this might have been a bit of a drawer front. You can see the, the nails and the screws and he drew these um, incredibly accurate burn marks. So he burnt his work, drew with sunlight into the wood. The great thing about that is he could only operate in the summer and he could only operate in, operate in daylight. So he, he didn't have to do all nighters. He could 
a glass of wine. <laughs> Another project, and this Icelandic artist as well, Ragnar Robertsdottir. This is a piece of her work where she glues bits of Hitla to the wall, particles of volcanic dust. But what I noticed was that as you walk towards the wall, the particles obviously join up and it becomes more solid. And that became the idea for a facade. A facade that was made of a series of ribs, zinc clad ribs, with glass between. But as you moved around the building, it could open up and be transparent, or it could be very dark. And that became the facade for the Pure Art Centre in Orkney, where they, they collected light during the day, and then at night it turned into a lantern. The object of showing this this image as well is the, the idea of a long gallery space which captures the landscape. I think it's called, you'll know better than I, I think it's shakai, Japanese, to borrow a landscape beyond your sight and bring it into your your composition. So we were borrowing this view of Hanneville deep into the plan and that's really important for our Maggie's. I think I hand over to Chris now. Yes, I'm going to pick up a little bit and I guess also talk about some ideas that influence our work um, as a practice and also specifically when we were asked to work on this project. Part of the theme of this lecture is about collaboration and one of the, one of the things that we had in this project that was really important that allowed that collaboration was time. And I think the other interesting thing to say at the beginning is just about the brief for the Maggie Centre, the brief doesn't actually mention the landscape or gardens at all. And I think this is one of the first projects, certainly we got the sense that they were, as a client, beginning to understand the importance of the garden and the landscape in the whole experience of a Maggie's, a Maggie's Centre. This is the Bash Rock, because it's about creating a space on a rocky outcrop in the middle of the, the port. Somebody at some time has created a little enclosure and made a garden in that, in that space. This is an artist whose work I really like, um, a Brazilian artist, Erando Espirito Santo. He works, um, he makes these kind of drawings, he makes large scale installations in, in gallery spaces. He also works in, in sculpture. I like the calmness of it, I like the way that just through very simple means he begins to kind of order the space and there is a, there's a, a beautiful kind of peacefulness about his work and his, um, his drawing. And when you're trying to work on a, on a Maggie's centre, a place where people are um, seeking calm and calmness, then I think it's nice to look for people that are doing that in a, in a similar way, in similar fields. But then, obviously, when we're working in the lands with landscape, we're working with topography, we're working with vegetation, we're, we're essentially working with found, a found condition and that necessarily means that everything can't fall neatly into place. Just a little bit about the history of our involvement in Maggie's. So we, the site was to the, to the west of Airtree. You can see the remnants of the tree belt. There's the, the major hospital, massive car park in front and a big car park to the, to the north. And this, this was our first attempt at an idea. Um, bearing in mind we've got these two stands of mature lime trees and a car park between them. We broke the brief down very simply into three, three, three types of accommodation. There were small cellular rooms which were very private, so toilets, counselling rooms where people were speaking one to one with, with a counsellor. And down the middle we put the key components of a Maggie's which are basically the kitchen and the dining table. The dining table is central to Maggie's idea. The idea is you come in, you make yourself a cup of tea, you sit down. You don't need anybody to help you do that, you just do that. And a conversation then, you can seek help if you want, or you can just have a cup of tea. So we, the original site was, these are the stands of, of mature lime. These little car parks were eroding the tree belt to the north. There's a kind of embrace, I like to think, where we would take a wall and we would engage with the lime trees but we would somehow pull them together by using the building. So a perforated brick wall. 
So we still have the three zones of coloration separated by circulation. And the, it operates across the walled garden, and Chris is going to show you that in more detail. We felt it was very important in the early stage that we, this, the slope is high to low, that we start at the high point and move into the site and drop down into the site. We felt that was <coughs> incredibly important, that the entrance to the building was as easy as we could make it. Now, one of the reasons, well, the main reason behind this is getting people to cross the threshold of a Maggie's is not, is not easy, because you have to admit there's, there's a big issue in your life. The building itself was a transitional space and not the object of the exercise. The object of the exercise was the garden. And you can see a grove of columns. We thought that the building could almost act like a little wood, a little canopy that would connect these two <coughs> mature woods. This was one of our first models or and the beginning of the perforated wall. Charles Jenks was concerned that we were creating a walled garden that would put people off entering. And I think that there was probably a point to that. So what we then began to develop was the idea that the, the wall would be a veil. It's Chris. Okay. So I think what Neil described was that there was already a very strong idea of landscape and the garden in the project <coughs> before before we were involved. So um, what we were trying to do was to obviously to try through the discussions that we had to add what qualities uh, a garden can bring to what was already a very well considered and really intriguing intriguing project and an, an intriguing site. And I guess as well as some of well, the precedents that we, ideas that I talked about earlier, What's also I think is interesting is just to look at other projects and just get a sense of scale. Like what can we do within this walled garden? We did a lot of these little drawings, but <clears throat> this is just looking at, essentially, this is the, the Maggie's um, project up here. That's the wall wrapping around. That's the Barcelona Pavilion. And it was quite, I always think of that as, as quite a large quite large when I, when I visited it and I always felt our garden was quite small but actually they're, they're very similar. This is um, Carlos Scarpa's Curini Stampalia in Venice and what struck us here was that there's that space is almost the same as the, the kind of arrival courtyard so what can you do, what, what, can, what is done in there in quite a rich but very small little courtyard and that's um, the Roanji um, Zen Garden in Kyoto, which again, really quite quite intimate and quite small. So we, we just did these to get a sense of what can you do in these kind of spaces, all of which are <coughs> enclosed in, in varying, varying ways. And the other th another idea that I was quite intrigued by was it's, the site is Monkland's General Hospital, which is originally the monks' lands, or the lands of the monks. And the idea of, Neil talked about, being able to have a walk. And whilst we weren't creating a cloistered garden, we were creating, or I was intrigued by this idea of, of a cloister that you can walk around uh, a green a garden without necessarily going into it, but you can, you can circulate around it. And I, I like this kind of Essentially, you're always outside, but there's different degrees of being outside. Maybe there's different degrees of being in the Maggie Centre without actually even having to go into the into the building. So this um, this is the plan, I guess, of of the project as it as it became um, the arrival to the first courtyard, the arrival courtyard, which I guess we articulated by. A couple of things. There's the two large lime trees that we were able to retain that kind of anchor the two corners. Um, this is the reception administration room, and we were keen that there was always a correspondence between a, an inside space and an outside planted 
area or there was always an inside and outside correspondence. So here we, we put a block of um, planting here so that as you're coming in, you don't feel like you're walking. You can be seen, but you're always, you're a little bit away from that. And, and the real channel of water here that, that flows that gives us a sense of sound and um, there's a, a, a place, a destination, and you could actually come in and decide you don't want to go in and have a seat to, or look at the garden and go back out again. But we also felt this it's just nice for people that are working in, in this room always to be looking out onto, onto a garden. Um, and then the terrace that steps down in various configurations of steps down to the the, the east garden, which is the, the woodland garden, and that's terminated by a still pool at that that end, and a series of smaller spaces that we kind of strung along along that northern northern wall. So the plan is really quite quite simple in the four um, four large trees in the in the woodland garden, and then I guess the idea of wrapping. Because this, this was a car park, remember, so all of this was, was asphalt. Wrapping just the simple woodland uh, tree bell around the, around the building. The courtyards that punctuate the space, we wanted to give them uh, a different character. Again, as Neil talked about, these are quite, these are largely unplanted. And then these spaces are, are lusher. I guess they take some of the character of the, the garden and bring them into the into the heart of the building, so that whenever you're, whenever you're within here, there's always a sense that you're sitting in a garden, whichever room you're in, um, wherever you wherever you are, whether you're looking out or you're looking into these courtyards, there's always a sense of being in, in the garden. This is the only area of lawn. I mean, there's there's a lot of lawn around the building, but within the wall, this is the only area, of, of lawn. But there are activities that happen. In, in Maggie centres that require a bit of open space and a bit of breathing space and we didn't want this to become too <coughs> too claustrophobic if you like so the, the rill separates the kind of entrance and um, the hard surface of the entrance space with this lawn it steps down very gently it follows the the topography the site is sloping very gently in away from away from us and it just a very simple um, stepping down that follows the, the geometry of the, the piers. And then the woodland garden is much, is, is different, it has a different character. Um, it's much more heavily planted. The, there is no, um, there's no lawn <coughs> in this area. It, it is um, either the kind of brick surface or the, the steps that we use as, as to create places that people could sit in. Um, again, the trees and this kind of tapestry of, of planting um, around the base of them that we we worked quite hard to get a nice kind of composition. We wanted this to be quite kind of low-key um, it's not particularly showy but we did want there to be interest throughout the year obviously and for there to be a kind of changing tapestry on the on the ground. And then the landscape that surrounds it again it was just taking the lawn and the grass that kind of wraps around the building and extending that across what was the car park and with a few new lime trees that will obviously in time will begin to kind of create that bigger frame. So you have the frame of the wall and then you have the frame of the trees that sits, sits around it and it, it will become increasingly feeling like it's sitting in a, in a, in a, a wood. In terms of the organisation of the garden, um, Neil talked about the grid and what we did very simply was extend that grid out into the into the, the walled garden and begin to use that to kind of organize some of the other spaces that were we were wanting to work with so this I the idea of the kind of private rooms that sat along that northern wall we extended out into a series of external rooms of different scales that again sat along that northern wall so they get the the sun from the you know throughout the day along that along that edge. And um, some of them are um, form part of the terrace, so the the large kind of seating steps. Some are that's a, a little space that is large enough to take a table. So
So much like there's an internal kitchen and the kitchen table inside, there's space for people to gather outside in that space. And then as you move away, a s two very small spaces surrounded by um, planting that feel very comfortable for one person to sit there on their own or, or a, a, you know, a couple of people. These are large um, seating steps, kind of double height, triple height steps in the terrace so that you can sit off to one side. I think it's always very nice that you, they're always kind of gathered around the edges of the space so that you're sitting, looking out into the garden rather than sitting in the middle of the garden. There is also loose furniture in the, in the garden that people can move around, which is also very important. You can find your own space, but these are just moments that people can perch and sit and look out into the, into the garden. And water. Um, there's a kind of idea that water moves through the building itself and through the garden in, in different forms. So the rill gives, uh, at the entrance, it kind of really enlivens the entrance and gives, there's the sound of running water in there at all times. And the pool at the end, which um, we always felt the garden, it needed, it needed some kind of a destination, it needed something to, for people to walk <coughs> to, and this really simple, still reflecting pool works. That's a, sh a slide just showing that idea of when you're in the, the lounge, you're always looking into, into a garden, and that's you know, the trees beyond the building. So you really feel like, and what we wanted to create was a sense of being sitting in a garden, at all times. And the larger kind of public rooms, the admin room and the lounge, and again there's always a, a green, there's always a planted space either side of these of these rooms. So there's always a you never when you're in one of the kind of more intimate spaces you're always looking out onto a onto a planted zone. This is this is that the counselling room at the the far end of the the garden and we wanted we wanted to create a kind of curtain because these are you know obviously they're very private moments and somebody might be in there with a the counsellor they might be very upset um, and you can obviously pull a curtain if you want to but we wanted to use um, planting and use the garden to create a kind of veil across there that m means that nobody can you can't walk past that window because it's, it's, it's soft and it's planted so that's moving towards the terrace, out onto the terrace. This is our neighbours. These blinkers were brought forward so that someone could sit on the terrace and not feel they were being watched by, by neighbouring buildings. But in doing that, it rather like that image of the, the Ackland Cook where the, the timber went beyond the top of the building. There's this idea that normally architecture, that wall would totally coincide with that wall and you'd get a very tight the idea was to be ambivalent, kind of like ambivalence or doubt. It's a kind of awkward moment, which I think works really quite well. And then the mirror happens on the on the facade, so that that tree isn't that tree. That tree is behind me. And again, it's that what's real, what's not. I think this is a great shot. Where these trees look as though they're growing right through the building. Purposely put in shots that which are just when we finished. And then going back to that idea of the Pure Art Centre where the sun dips, something else happens is that the the mirror disappears because instead of collecting light and reflecting light it starts to 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 emit light. So suddenly you can see how the plan works, these two storage walls separating the three zones coming out onto the terraces. And this shows the, there is, I mean, there's a substantial change in level between the building and the garden. And we wanted to, we wanted to use that opportunity to make places and to make spaces that people can, can inhabit. And originally we had, we had the terrace running the full length of the building to create a very kind of noble, um, threshold, I guess, between the, the building and the garden. 
but it was partly partly to create that veil between the counselling room and the 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 external space to stop these kind of chairs sitting immediately outside that room that we introduced some planting here and it was also one of the when you're working on a Maggie's project you, we obviously we discussed the project with um, with Charles Jenks and Laura Lee who's the chief executive of Maggie's and other interested people that kind of are involved in the organisation and it was somebody else who just who looked at looked at the terrace and just said it's just too much concrete in this you know you have to get rid of some of it so we also at this point introduced another kind of block of grasses down here and I think it, it works really well that you get this in interweaving of the garden and the, the terrace and the kind of triple height steps here that people can come off and sit where they can sit down in this point looking over the over the garden that's the view from that bench down in the corner back to the back to the the garden so you can see that again the, the, the trees popping out through the, the wall the hose pipe tied in the corner and it's it's nice because it, it is you know it is a it's a, a garden and that these things you know it's again some people might get their knickers and a twist all of that's on display but I think it's quite nice that it is just it is quite a relaxed place and the, even the idea that somebody could go and water plants themselves if they wanted to and use the garden in that way I think is is important and is part of the spirit of what a, a Maggie's a Maggie's centre is about I think this the wall, I mean, Neil, Neil talked about it, and it is, it is absolutely fun, phenomenal. And Laura Kinnaird, who was the, the project architect, drew, she pretty much drew every brick in every elevation on that wall. And when you turn up on site, the, the brickies that were building, it had a, a kind of, you know, an A3 drawing beside them, you know, two metres ahead of where they should be working away. It was, it was amazing. It's, a, it's an absolute, you know, it's fantastic. There's parts of it that are so perforate that you, you actually really wonder how it how it stands up. And we we did devise a system because of the importance of the trees on the site that the the foundation design is quite complex and that the there are there is a beam that kind of sits um, above ground with with pads underneath the columns because we wanted to lift the foundation for the wall as high as we could to allow the roots of trees to kind of pass underneath it where possible. So I guess there's a kind of design, and, and that was largely the engineers that kind of clearly developed that solution, but there's design, a lot of work in here that's not seen, but if, hadn't, if it hadn't gone on, then, you know, if we lost several of those trees because of, you know, bad foundation design or kind of careless contractors then it would have been a, a completely different project and then that's just a drawing just to finish that's a drawing that we did after the project that um, we put into the, the RSA but a drawing of, the, of the, the West Garden that is clearly inspired by the artist um, that I talked about at, at the beginning so it's quite nice just to come full circle that a drawing or a series of drawings that were looked at at the beginning of the project then actually influenced how we drew the project ourselves after it was after it was completed and that's um, everything for me thank you